Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. The verse we're dealing with, Dr. Shabir, is from chapter 5, and it's verse 5. It says, This day are all good things made lawful for you. The food of those who have received the scripture is lawful for you. So what does this verse mean? Why is it misunderstood? I leave it to you, Dr. Shabir. So uh, the, the verse says in Arabic, uh, This day all uh, good things are permissible for you. And in the context, it seems to mean good things to eat. Uh, and it continues to say, And the food of the people of the book is uh, permissible for you to eat. What is meant by the people who received the scripture uh, before us. So wh who are those people? Well, generally it is thought to include at least the Jews and Christians because they have some scripture. They're thought to be in close affinity with Muslims. Um, many of the stories from the Bible are there in the Quran as well. The heroes, the prophets, uh, and of course we believe in the same God. Uh, so uh, the Quran is here giving permission for Muslims to eat the food of the people of the book. But confusion arises in the minds of Muslims over this because Muslims have tended to think uh, that uh, unless you slaughter meat uh, by saying Bismillah at the time, and that would seem to entail that you must have a Muslim slaughtering the, the animal, then that meat would not be permissible for Muslims uh, to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, this in part uh, came as a result of an interpretation of a verse of the Quran from the sixth chapter, Surah 6, verse 121, where it says that, uh, you know, don't eat that on which the name of Allah has not been mentioned. Putting together all the verses of the Quran that deal with the matter of eating meats, it seems that what is at work here in Surah 5 verse number 5 is that uh, Jews and Christians do not slaughter in the name of anyone else other than God. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Christians do not, as far as I know, mention any name when they slaughter meats for food. And uh, um, only in my humble research, I found only one uh, branch within Judaism has uh, an equivalent of reciting a blessing at the time of slaughtering the animal. But when they recite the blessing, they don't recite any other name than the name of God. In fact, they don't technically mention a name. They say Hashem, which means the name uh -huh. in Hebrew, an indirect reference to the name without calling out the name actually, because there's a tradition among some Jews that uh, to uh, recite the name of God would be uh, sacrilegious. It's yes, better yes. To, out of respect and out reverence, of respect, right? Yeah, so it's uh, avoided. One might find a roundabout way of speaking of God, doing something, uh, mention the action in the passive, for example, or refer to uh, God's name as the name rather mm. than to say the actual name. Now, how does that tie in with what we find mentioned in the Quran? In the second chapter of the Quran, uh, we, we read as in Surah Al-Baqarah, Only th these things are forbidden for you. Uh, the uh, maita, which is uh, dead animals. Um, of course, if you slaughter an animal, it would be dead, but it has a particular connotation here, which I I'll, um, expand if needed. And uh, at dam, the blood, uh, so, you know, you draw the blood from the animal, that becomes impermissible for Muslims to drink or to cook in food. Well, the, the, the meat of swine. Uh, uh, that which is dedicated to other than, than God. People slaughtered the animals on the altars of the idols and so on. So this all becomes permiss impermissible for Muslims. Something like this is mentioned in the uh, Bible in the first book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, verse number 6 onwards, where Paul is speaking about, uh, you know, people uh, wondering about the food that is sacrificed to the idols. And he says the idols are nothing. But this is a question that remained for Muslims. And in the sixth chapter of the Quran, the problem seems to be for Muslims. Muslims that if you eat from those slaughtered animals, it's in some way as if you are participating in the worship of idols by participating in this meat. So those are the four things that are impermissible. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the key thing here for our question is that which is offered to the idols or slaughtered in the name of other than God. Mm -hmm. And since Jews and Christians do not slaughter in the name of any other God, because to begin with, they just believe in the one God that we believe in. And even though our Christian friends uh, sometimes speak of Jesus as being God, nonetheless, they do not mention any name when slaughtering the animal. This is why it seems to me that in Surah 5 verse number five, there is this kind of blanket uh, generalization that the food of the people of the book uh, is good for you, provided, of course, it falls under tayyibat. This mm -hmm. is, you could say, a subset of the tayyibat. All good things are 
permissible for you or pure things. Uh, so among the good things is the food of the people of the book. But of course, so long as that food intersects, if we if we say this is the circle of good things and this is the circle of the food of the people of the book, that much which intersect with the circle of good things, that of course would I mean I mean all food of obviously people are not going to eat bad things, but but pure and good from the Islamic perspective. That yes. Is pure and yes. Good. Because some Christians might eat pork, right? Uh, yes. Where the two circles uh, intersect, that is what is permissible for for Muslims. So uh, if, if meat is slaughtered by the people of the book, then uh, that is uh, permissible for Muslims according to uh, this verse. Mm-hmm. Of course, then, then the wider question becomes, okay, how do people of the book fit into our modern society where we're living, let's say, in Canada or the United States, are there people of the book still? Like, is is the general society one of people of the book, or is it not? Yeah, well, the the question arises uh, for two reasons. One is that people tend now towards atheism, agnosticism, yes. and so on, even in a majority, uh, let's say, Christian population. But the Muslim scholars say about this that uh, no, we just go with the overall and apparent circumstance. We don't dig too deep to start making everything impermissible for Muslims. So if if you go to a Muslim country, the uh, the presumption is that the meat there is permissible. And you don't have to say, well, okay, it looks like the Muslims now are, you know, apostatizing from their religion <laughs> and turning to atheism and so on, right? We mm-hmm. don't know if it's a good Muslim or an atheist tending mm-hmm. Muslim who um, has slaughtered the meat. So that question is, is laid to rest. The other thing is that people may say, but you know, uh, Christians now believe in the Trinity and so on. Uh, but the answer to that is that even at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, people did believe in the Trinity. Mm-hmm. That's why the Quran is mentioning it. Mm-hmm. And people did take Jesus for God. That's why the Quran is mentioning it. And yet the people of the book is, uh, you know, when they're spoken about, they're spoken about in a respectful manner. And uh, their food is uh, said to be permissible for the Muslims even then. So it should be the same now as well. All right. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Ashur. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muslim Media Hub, the new home of Let the Quran Speak. Here we spread positivity and good. We help people experience the beauty of Islam and uh, help them appreciate and understand Muslims. This beautiful building we purchased at cost $2.3 million. Yeah, we've already raised a third of that money and with your help, inshallah, we can pay off the rest. So we're looking for people who can give $1,000 each. If you can be part of the select group, that's amazing. Otherwise, just uh, please give whatever you can every dollar counts it's our collective responsibility to share the message of islam with our fellow human beings please help us continue this good work it's a sadaqa jariya something that will continue to be a benefit to the muslim community long after safiya and i are gone <laughs> <laughs> please support our work at muslimmediahub.com your support is zakat eligible and tax deductible may allah bless you and your loved ones today and always assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum